I was made for loving you, baby. You were made for loving me. Checking in here on Monday. What day is it? <laughs> November 27th. 20 and the 23 on the Mayan calendar. And it's 12.01 p.m. on the Swatch Watch here in the farm fields of Valparaiso, Indiana. Wonderful Saturday night in Indianapolis with Kiss. Bucket list item. Check. I've probably seen Kiss 12 times in concert. However, it was my kids, Kid 1, Madison, Kid 2, Maya, Kid 3, Bart the Second, a.k.a. Deuce. It was their first time, and I overheard on Sunday, I overheard Kid 1 uh, saying to her mother that it was life-changing. <laughs> Not sure it was life-changing, but Kiss did put on an incredible show. And I would, maybe it's recent, recent, What's it called? Recency by, by <laughs> can you talk today? All fired up. Recency bias could be the case, but it may have been the greatest Kiss concert I have ever attended. And we had incredible seats. Section 117 of the Gain Bridge Field House, where the Indianapolis where the Indiana Pacers play. Section 117 front row, sent front row. So it was amazing seats. Anyways, great show, beautiful time. So happy my kids got to see Kiss as this is apparently, wink, the end of the road tour. I've been on several last tours for Kiss, so <laughs> I think this is the last one, but we will see. But checking in on the Robin Hood here, we're at 1.774, down nearly 10,000 today. My oil positions are making my butt stink. We'll talk about that in a second, but let's see what we have. We don't have a bunch of things on the board. You know how I do. I normally have a bunch of trades on the board, but I'm trying to end the year with a consolidated portfolio of positions. So I am making progress. I'm making some headway in that. Right now we got ABV 142 calls at 44% profit. Those expire Friday. CVX 61% profit on the 146s. Unfortunately, because CVX is currently down today. What are they at? They're at 143, down 1.31% on that. Gilead is at 90% profit, unfortunately, because Gilead has been struggling ever since I took ownership. They're currently up to date. No, they're down today 1% at 74.64. Hood, Boys in the Hood, $8.50 calls are under pressure, which is good news, meaning they're making their way up to me, babe. But we own them at 950. So we're risking it for the biscuit on the 850 calls. So we'll be rolling those um, out and up if possible, as maybe as soon as tomorrow, tomorrow, we'll roll them tomorrow. Target 132s, they should be under pressure as well. They are 131.71, so that's good for all of us Target sufferers because I own Target right under the water there, right under the bridge at 142.77. I was down a lot more than this, only down 88.47 as far as my entry price, but I am in the green. Believe it or not, I'm in the green on premiums and dividends if you add it all together and uh, shake it up. Market with a B, we are in the profit, but we want that to keep rising. And we want to, if it keeps rising the way it is, we're going to make all kinds of dough on Target because we've been rolling it just a dollar at a time. Hello. So, Unity, uh, I thought those were going to be under pressure this week, but they are currently not. Unity down 2.88%. So, our 2950 calls are doing just fine. We have the UCO. $24 puts. So this is a leveraged against oil. Or I said, yeah, so it's a leveraged with oil. So if this UCO, if oil goes down, which it is today, this will go down further than say the USO. So it's down two and a half percent today and USO is down 1.1, no, 1.6 percent. So they are currently, this $24 puts are not under pressure, but we'll find out. We'll see. We should be just fine, but this becomes the nail biting time because USO isn't performing exactly. I mean, it's close to exact, but not exactly how I would want it to today as it moves sideways, but lower sideways, which is, you know, can be troubling for us. Uh, Valero 126 calls. They are, we have nine contracts, so 900 shares. 
currently at 124.39. So our 126 calls are fine, but Valero moves a little bit more, a um, little bit higher beta than most oil stocks. And then Win, we've got Win Resorts $92 calls. Unfortunately, we rolled those out and down a dollar. And right now, there's no pressure, unfortunately, on Win. So they're at trading at 87.07, down 1.41%. But long term on Win, I am feeling just fine. But let's take a look. First at S&P, let's go to the Yahoo Finance board. And we've got S&P basically flat today, but it's been essentially red all day, but it's the least red it's been since the open, down 0.01%. NASDAQ has now gone green on us. Crude oil is actually accelerated a bit into the red at 1.23% down. Gold looking good, silver looking good. We'll talk about silver in a minute because we've been talking about it the last few days. But this is the look at the USO, okay? And we've been talking about this for a week or two now, right? So right around this $67 local bottom, which was what? That was the 16th, maybe? It was November 16th. Hit a local bottom of about 67 bucks. Then it bounced all the way to 73 then it went down to 69, back up to 71.85. And then today is pressuring us down. We, a couple things. One, w- red flag one would be if it breaches the $69 mark before heading back up. That's red flag number one. Invalidation becomes if it breaches past the 67. Then we'll be looking at this in a whole new light, which is a light I do not want to look at because I hold so many oil positions. So if we look at local, from the local bottom of 67, one up, two down to 69, three up to 71.75. And this one should, if it's if it can hold and not get below that 69, we can count that as a four, a local four down with five being the next move up. And I'm hoping that happens by Wednesday. <laughs> Keep your fingers crossed, right? Yeah, that's correct. I don't have a whole lot of time for this particular video because Stacy wrangled me into an estate planning meeting with some hoity toity a state planning attorney, and she was kind of hinting around at what the possible total cost of this entire estate planning will be. And it's a lot of dollar bills. So I'll listen if I don't fall asleep and we'll see what we do. Of course, I mean, we have a minimal amount of estate planning now, but what we're looking to do is a living trust, et cetera, like the whole enchilada. So I'll keep you posted on that and the cost, which was rumored to be around 8000 So that buys me a lot of baseball cards. But I do want to protect my assets, protect uh, my Sparkle Barbie in case something were to happen to me. And then, of course, protect our kids long term regarding um, inheritance tax, etc. Although, like I told them, I plan to sp- spend it down to zero. <laughs> I read a great book a couple years ago called Die With Zero. It makes a lot of sense. So read that if you have those aspirations in mind, because my kids have already been well taken care of. So what else we got? Um, TLT. So this one is a brand new one I've been looking at probably for two weeks now, but I, I think this is the first time I've talked about it because TLT is setting up for a big move up. Big move up. So we're keeping an eye on it. Could be making its way up to current, you know, right now it's trading at 9091. This thing could go to 110, 120 um, within the next couple of months. So I'm watching the setup. I have no positions in TLT at the moment. I almost took a position here. I should have, but we're watching this next move to see is it going to then start making its run. If it does, um, confirm that it is, I will let you know as soon as the charts tell me, or at least show me, because again, these things do not predict the predict the future, but they do predict probabilities. So all we need is the odds forever in our favor, correct? Uh-oh, look at USO making a move back. Come on, baby. Come on, baby doll. Up to over 70. It's at 70.03. So that is actually exactly what we would want to see if it was now from now through the end of the week to breach that $73 mark, then that could confirm that that local bottom of 67 is indeed in place. And then we'll be looking to count a five impulse wave up, one, two, three, four, and then five, which should exceed that $73, which would be considered the recent high, right? So we'll look for that. 
In the meantime, TLT setting up for a big move up after it's been just downtown the Chinatown. And part of it would be is if we, if the market, which is always ahead of us, right? If the market sentiment tells us that in 2024, the Fed is indeed going to begin a series of interest rates uh, cuts, then TLT will in fact be going further and further up, which makes perfect sense to me. We'll explain more of that when I have more time. Silver, we talked about this a few days ago, setting to go up. And guess what? It's done exactly that. Currently today, it's off its day high, but it's still up 1.44%. It was up like 2.5% on Friday, as high as another 2% or so today. It's come off that day's high a little bit. But again, it could be looking at an ABC corrective before it's going to go up and uh, make its big five wave up but we'll be counting the waves and we can look down here right now at the rsi and macd rsi shows that it's pretty far up there macd's got a nice twist to it up which tells us that we should have some room to roam with the next couple of moves we'll decide how far because this 2251 and the slv which is the silver trust iShares could easily go to 26 and that's a big move when you're looking at these numbers right so i did take a position in what i don't think i wrote it down i have it on my i have it here though i took a position in the uvxy uvxy is let's take a look at now let's go let's go brand new here about a chart and uvxy is it two times levered. So that, yeah, two times leveraged futures on silver. Oh, I'm sorry. That's VIX. <laughs> I did take a position on VIX too. Hey, that's a strong sell. Don't do it. I think, you know, it's been, it's so low right there that it's got to go up. I mean, the VIX, how low can this go? Can it go down low all the way to the flow? What else we got? So I did take a position in SPX um, U this morning, which is a short position on SPX. And I got <laughs> I got scared and sold it out at exactly what I paid for it, which I'm glad because it's gone down since then. What did I pay? I buck 05. What is it now? SPX. Why? Do I keep putting the wrong thing in? XPX U. Oh, it's only down two cents since I sold it at 10.05. No, nope. yeah, two cents down, three cents down. Wait, where is it right now? I'm lost. Oh, now I'm really happy that I sold it because it's certain, currently at 9.98. So that, I had the wrong impression for today. I was just going to look to try a different approach. You know, I try a bunch of different styles of trading just to see what resonates. I'm not sure that that <laughs> resonated at all since I sold it like an hour after I bought it. But luckily it was at, I lost a few dollars and uh, they charge you, you know, for their, for the trades now. Um, but it wasn't months. It might've been 50 cents. I lost total. Uh, AGQ, that's what it was. AGQ is the levered, AGQ is the levered silver. Ultra silver, two times ATF. Uh, let's look at that. I did get involved in that this morning. So, and I plan to just hold it probably a couple of days, a few days, just to see what's up. Currently up two and a half percent today. So that's um, AGQ. These ETFs and these market funds, even the leveraged ones, are very intriguing to me for short-term plays, like even one day to five days to 10 days type of trades, like on that US UCO uh, that we put on Let's go to that. Where When did I put that UCO on? Uh, what was that? Wednesday. So on Wednesday, I put on UCO, which is the levered, you know, essentially against oil or with oil. I went to the 24 because my play is oil's going up. It hasn't exactly done that. But because of volatility, I was able to get this 24, collect $300, and it's still way out of the money. So we got that going for us. I'll keep you posted on my thoughts on those though. Not always clear, obviously. I wanna to put together some thoughtful videos regarding Elliott Wave Theory and Fibonacci and Liberace retracement, but I go on these videos without any thought. <laughs> it's obvious, Bart. 
I just click record and start talking and we could tell. So I want to actually maybe have some notes one time and, or maybe I'll just put a, together a quick presentation on what I've learned so far, which is what you would call the tip of the iceberg, which makes me dangerous. So you, again, should not follow any of this as an investment advice because, you know, my buy high, sell low strategy <laughs> doesn't always work out. It's not funny, Bart. I followed some of your trades and now I'm bankrupt. No, that's not a joke. Or that is just a joke. Not funny. Uh, and that's it for the week, right? Yeah. So far, that's what we have on the board so far. But we'll be keeping um, our eye on oil, silver. I'll be looking at this TLT because if it sets up, then I'm going long on it. It's setting up, I should say. But if it verifies, if it confirms then I'll definitely be going long and holding that to at least 100. Okay, I hear somebody yelling for me, so I got to roll. Thanks for tuning in. I will see you in the next video. I'm